one God, Amen. Of the things I love so dearly about the church, is that we're not here just reading stories, but the church gives us an opportunity to actually live these moments again. Like just a few moments ago, when we were praying and following the procession, did you not actually feel that when you were all singing at the top of your lungs, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, did you not feel that you were saying this to the Christ himself? That it wasn't just something that we reenact, but we relive. Reenactment means that it's like a show, but relive means we re experience it again. And the beauty of Holy Week is this, that we're not just hearing stories that were long ago and forgotten, but every day we relive the moments as if we're there with our Lord. And again, the nice thing for us is that we relive them how the Lord must have, knowing the ending. And so it's not so hard but it becomes so much deeper because we feel every moment as if it's happening in front of us. So many times I remember standing and hearing the gospel of the hour and feeling like I'm actually watching it happen in front of me. So what the church has done for us then is that we're supposed to receive something from this. Just like the disciples that saw all of this happen, they received something deeper, a deeper understanding, a personal touch. And so we, and my hope, of course, for this week coming, is that we also receive this personal touch from Christ the Lord Himself. And my hope for this personal touch, if I may say, is that we gain an understanding of His great love for us, Because in order to truly understand Christ, we must learn how to understand how much He loves us. There's a passage in the Epistle of St. John, chapter 4, verse 17. It says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. And later on, St. John says, we love him because he first loved us. And so as we're experiencing this coming week again, for some of us, maybe the first time in a deep way, for others of us, we've felt this dozens of times, and we wait with like eager anticipation. This feeling of like finally feeling again God's love for us. Today, we call it Lazarus Saturday. Lazarus Saturday uh, tells the story of the raising up of Lazarus, of course. And the raising up of Lazarus' stories, the story has a lot of love in it from the beginning. From the beginning, Mary and Martha, when they sent to Christ that Lazarus was sick, they said, the one whom you love is sick. And so it paints this picture of this isn't just another person. He's actually named. This is someone that Christ loves. And so we automatically connect to that because we know that he loves us too. As a church, very true, but also on a personal level, one-to-one. And I was thinking even during the procession that if we were actually living it and someone stopped, and wanted to ask the Lord a question, that he would actually stop and listen to this person from a young child to the oldest among us. Because our connection with Christ is real, and it's spiritual and deep. 
Later on, we, when Christ actually gets there, by then, Lazarus had been dead for actually four days. And so the first person to greet him was Martha. And the first thing she says to him is that, Lord, if you were here, he wouldn't have died. She can't help herself. Like, she has faith, obviously. She said so. Like, I know that if you were here, he wouldn't have died. But she couldn't help herself but to spit it out. And so Christ takes it in. But then he says to her, that, but your brother's going to rise again. And Martha said, yeah, I, I know, I understand. We all rise again in the resurrection. And then the Lord tells her this verse, the first verse that is like so powerful. And it's a reminder to us, and it's our first moment now in the Holy Week where we hear something that we can like latch on to. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes, that's true. All of this, all that we're experiencing now, is to one goal, resurrection. And so no matter how much pain we experience and we see, we know that the result in the end is resurrection. Why? Because He is the resurrection and the life. He says to her, He who believes in Me, though he may die, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in Me shall never die. And He says to her, Do you believe this? And I think to myself, how like me now as a father, a father of the priesthood and a father of two children, this idea that if my children had a fear, any one of us, I would wish to remove that fear from them. And so the Lord shows us this personal touch of love where what we fear the most is death as humans. The scariest thing that we can face is death. And for us, He removed that. And so we don't ever fear death anymore. It's this first sign of love. Later on, Martha sends to Mary. Mary's at home. She's devastated. Her brother's died. And she's with all the other Jews that are sitting in mourning with her. We've all experienced this. So again, think about that you're sitting there in the Aza, watching Mary sort of mumble to herself, wishing that her brother was still alive, and feeling her pain. And then so Mary gets up as soon as she hears from Martha and runs to Christ. And then Mary says the same thing to him. He's, she says to him, if you were with us, I know that if you were with us, he wouldn't have died. But this time, Christ doesn't have an answer. This time, Christ only has love. And it's... I don't always want to cry because <laughs> it wastes time. But it's such a touching thing to imagine that the Lord understands us, that He actually feels us on a personal level, to think that the Lord groaned in Himself and felt that feeling that we all feel as we're sitting with someone that we're... And we feel their pain so deeply. And imagine that Christ, even though He knows that the, the end result is resurrection... Because, and we know, we know the story. But that concept of Christ's love for us is so deep that He would groan in His Spirit and actually weep the same tears that we weep when we're with someone that feels that feeling. And it's, a, it's an incredible reminder to us of the personal love that the Lord has for us on a personal level. Oftentimes, we might feel alone in our pain and then you'll go to the priest, and the priest would say, no, you're not alone. Christ is actually with you. He understands your pain, and He knows it because He felt it Himself. And because He knows it, He shares it with you. <clears throat> this concept of love is called empathy. Empathy is feeling so strongly the love for someone else that you feel their pain. And empathy is a beautiful thing for two reasons. There's probably many reasons, but I'll stick to two reasons. The first reason that empathy is such a beautiful thing is that in order for us to make sure that the person in front of us understands that we care for them and that we love them is to actually feel their pain. And so sometimes the Lord allows for us to feel great pain, deep scars, because when we feel that pain and we think to ourselves, 
I wouldn't wish this on any other person in the world. They even say, like, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, right? I wouldn't wish this pain on anybody. And then when we see someone feeling that same pain later on, we can share with them. Especially if we've actually held access to the Lord, where we've shared with Him our pain on a personal, prayerful level. We actually listened to Abuna when he said, no, go tell Christ. Go raise your hands and say, I am very hurt by this. This is extremely painful. And I know you know, because I read it, and I know you experienced it because I was there and I relived it on Lazarus Saturday. What empathy also does is that it makes sure that we don't hurt our brethren because we know how things feel. And so it is our beck and call that when we know how someone is going to feel about something, especially if it's very painful, we never do it to them. <laughs> Simple as that. So something like talking about others. I am a man knowing quite well that people must talk about me on some level, I would imagine. I don't like to think about it, to be honest. But when I do think about it, and if it's like something bad or something embarrassing, like that's like so painful to think that people are talking about me and saying something about me. That hurts. And so what can I do with this hurt? I never do it to someone else. And if I do do it to someone else, it would be a great shame for me to talk about someone, even though I know how much it hurts. And so as you can see here also, one of the gifts that we receive during Holy Week is that we live with Christ day to day to day, and our hearts are so open, and our spirits are so in tune, and our distractions are so gone, that we can gain so much during this week because we can actually experience His true love for us and for each other. And so if we can actually take from this, then we'll be all the better. So imagine, coming, moving forward from now, if you decide for yourself, I never speak about anyone else because I know that hurts. Or if you've ever been lied to from someone that you love, that's a very painful one too because you feel like you trusted that person. It hurts so bad. It's such a deep pain. So now, if I felt it, this empathy, I felt it myself, I never do it to anyone else. Far be it from me to cause anyone that kind of pain. And where am I learning this? I'm learning it from the Word. And not just the Word, but because I'm experiencing it again and again and again every Holy Week. You see now tonight, we now live in a different place. Now we're sitting with Lazarus and Mary and Martha in their home, and Lazarus is very much alive. <laughs> because of course, Christ is the resurrection and the life. So how many days does it take for someone to be so rotten that he can't raise them up again? It's uncountable. Four days? What's four days of rottenness? And now that we're sitting, we're sitting in the room, imagine. Again, we just heard the Gospel. So I'm trying to like show you that we can actually be in tune with what's being read like we're there. We're reliving it. And then Mary, who before, you can imagine, like felt the teardrops of Christ as she was at His feet, like bawling because her, her brother had died and she had wished that He was there. And she remembers that love that Christ provided her in his groaning and in his tears, that empathy that he had for her, the feeling like, I know how you feel. This hurts me too. And so what does she do now in return? Now she has this very costly oil, the spike nard, to the point where even in the gospel, Judas, we don't like to talk about Judas too much, but we have to say his name sometimes. Like, says, like, what is she doing? She's, like, wasting this very expensive oil. This could have, like, been someone's salary for a whole year. But for her, love now has no price. Love is literally priceless. Like, for her to think, like, to measure this and be like, should I or should I not? As if he just raised my brother from the dead. 
He gave me hope. He felt my pain. He lived with me in my worst moment and pulled me out of it. Of course now, I'm not going to measure how much this spike, this like very precious oil costs. I'm going to dump the whole thing on his feet and I'm going to wipe it on my hair. And here, sitting now, since we're reliving it, we can almost smell the aroma. It's the aroma that covers death. It's the aroma of life. So, if I could again remind you, we were, we're reliving these moments. Tomorrow you're going to relive the entrance into Jerusalem. You're going to imagine that you're there. You're going to be singing at the top of your lungs. Not because you want people to hear you, but because Christ is in our midst. And He's come to us. And He wants this welcome. For the first time, He's allowed this great welcome. And so, since our humble Lord is willing is willing to take this welcome once and for all, then we're going to give it to Him at the top of our lungs. And moving on from day to day today, listen to every Gospel like you're there reliving it. Take from it His love and put it in your life and decide to live like Him. Remember the verse that I read earlier. It kind of makes maybe more sense now. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. This is our chance now to learn from Him. To take, to not just read a story, but to actually take from Him this love. To feel it in our hearts as if it's for us personally. And now to share it with the rest of the world. We love Him because He first loved us. But also, we love each other because He first loved us. And glory be to our God forever. Amen. Shri Lazarus, we thank